Okay, here he is, XM's latest Ghost Rider. I must say, this is a very impressive statue. So one of the cool things about this piece is you actually get two completely different Ghost Riders. A lot of people have held that title over the years, including the Red Hulk and the Punisher, but here we have two of the earlier incarnations of the character. We have Caleb here, who was a slave during the Civil War, and we have Carter Slade, who was a gunslinger in the Wild West. So starting off here with the base, at the very bottom, we have this very decorative museum-style base. I believe this is the first time I've ever seen a base like this on an XM piece. Usually they take the ground or whatever is happening in the scene all the way to the very bottom. But here we have a little separation. I think it's really cool. It definitely adds to the time period, kind of giving it that Old West look and feel. We have the wood grain, sort of the uh, metal iron decorative features, something you'd see maybe in a saloon or perhaps even uh, the way guns were designed back then. See a lot of pistols that were made out of wood that had this riveted metal on it. I'm wondering if this was sort of a one shot or if they're kind of testing out this kind of design for future bases, but uh, I like it. I think as long as it fits the piece and helps tell the story, uh, I'm all for it. But uh, above that, we have the actual scene going on here, which is a burning floor. We have all this rock to suggest that this is out in the country somewhere. We have the bull skull uh, that we always see in those Old West films. We have some uh, fallen debris. And of course, we have the hellfire that is burning up the ground. Very nicely done rocks. We have a, a nice warm neutral tone. I, I think it complements the sub bass very well. Looks like something you'd find in the desert. So moving up to the horse, uh, this thing is also pretty cool looking. So when XM first announced that they were doing a Ghost Rider on horse, uh, I had a different picture in my head. I kind of pictured the horse being up on his hind legs, sort of in that Lone Ranger style pose, a little bit more upright to match that cover. So when I first saw this revealed, I kind of had mixed emotions, being that the horse was kind of looking downward. But the more I looked at it, the more it grew on me. I think it actually brings a lot more meaning to the piece, not having it in sort of a triumphant pose, but rather a very uh, hostile pose. You can really sense the aggression in the movement of the horse. We've got his head down. We've got him in a very dynamic lean. His hind legs are actually elevated. So the entire horse slopes downward. The Ghost Rider is holding him by the reins, kind of steering him into action. We've got the flames coming out of his eyes. His entire mane is flame. All his legs are on fire and his entire tail is made out of fire. And when I look at this piece, I just see rage. And uh, that's sort of what the spirit of vengeance is all about. So we've got real chains here, connecting the reins and all the different harnesses. The way they engineered the stirrups was very clever. We can see all the little strands of muscle as if its skin has been burned off. If we look here at his ears, they're actually just flames. It looks like the fire has burned through his skin and is coming off of his skull. The jawbone looks very bony as well to kind of give us that dead alive feel, but I think it looks really cool. We do see some teeth here in the front as well. We have the saddle with all the shredded material underneath. Just a really unique design here. So here we have the Caleb setup. I think this option is super dynamic with this flowing cloak. We've got it kind of going every which way. I love all the texture, all the fraying on the bottom, the little holes in there. We also have his chain that's going all over the place, through the tail, around and over here with the spike ball you really get a good sense of motion. So Caleb's costume design is very Grim Reaper-ish. He does wear pants and boots. We've got the skull that's kind of just floating there. I really love this little flame coming out of his eye. Very well sculpted hand bones. So when I was looking at the pictures, I didn't know if I was gonna be into this robe so much, but uh, seeing it in hand, it adds so much action to the statue. And I think it works well with the overall appearance of the horse, as this is how it appears in the comic books. Whereas with Carter Slade here, in the comic books, he didn't really look like a flaming skeleton. He actually looked more like a white ghost. I don't think it was until they introduced his character in that Nicolas Cage movie, where we actually see him on fire with a flaming horse. This chain right here is not a real chain. It's made out of a more lightweight material as is the ball here. And on the actual ball itself, some of these spikes 
they start off hard. They're a little bit more forgiving at the end, and that's probably for safety reasons or just so you don't break the tips off of them. But you might have to play with them a little to get them the way you want. That was the Caleb version. Let's go ahead and switch it out for the Carter Slade version. First thing we need to do, we need to remove the chain here and it comes off in several different pieces. I thought it was really cool how they actually had the chain going through the tail. And then we have these two little flame pieces that we use to cover up the holes. We have to remove the chain from his hands. So I'm gonna take this guy off. I'm gonna take off his gun, make him a little bit more easy to move around and see if we can lift this whole thing off and put it on there. And you have to be careful with the cape because it is so large. You wanna make sure you support the whole thing and everything should just come off. It was a little bit tricky kind of lining everything up with this peg here and I actually found it easier to kind of lift it up and that way you can kind of line it up a little bit better. And as you can see, you can display them like this. However, that cape is gonna take up a lot of room. It is a lot easier to maneuver this torso. It just goes on like that. I've already got his hand on, one of his hands. This hand right here is fixed. I don't know what happened to my Lego piece. So I'm just gonna use this little twist tie. All you have to do is kind of loop it through like this, feed it through his hand, and pull it through. And then we have to give him his gun. So Carter Slade was actually the very first Ghost Rider in comic books, and his name was actually changed to the Phantom Rider once uh, Johnny Blaze was introduced as Ghost Rider in the 70s. But here we get a better look at his flaming pants. We have some nice texturing. We can see some ripped areas as well. He's got a nice leather holster along with his pistol. He's got the button-up shirt, the little bandana around his neck, and then a long leather coat. So the coat itself is actually sort of a brownish color with some reddish tones in it. It's not as black as the cloak on Caleb. The lapel does have a purple tint to it. I think I would have preferred a more brownish color to go along with the rest of the coat, but it does add some contrast and color variation. We do get to see a bit more of the saddle details with this option. We can see all the little stitching in the leather. We do have the cross design on his back kind of looks like the cross that we have on the ground. I think this version looks a bit better from the side. You get a lot more motion when you see that coat kind of flowing right behind him. And from the front, you don't really get to see his face because his hat is blocking his eyes. There is one more option here, and that is to give him his spiked flail or mace. We just have to remove his hand, put this through his hand. We can let gravity do the work this time. And you can adjust the length to your liking. And I believe it just kind of wraps around his arm here a few times. I like the fact that he's holding a weapon. However, I don't like the fact that it just hangs straight down. You kind of lose that illusion of forward movement. Typically, if you're moving, uh, this thing would also be maybe like slightly bent or back. Maybe if they use the same material they use for this chain, they could have sculpted this in a way to make it look a little bit more like it was moving. I suppose you could do that yourself if you put like a wire in here maybe, but the ball itself does have some weight to it, but uh, still pretty cool nonetheless. So this statue opened for pre-order on December 15th, and as I mentioned, this is a production unit. They have the box art print design all ready to go. This guy is scheduled to be shipped out in Q1 of this year, so there shouldn't be too long a wait. But uh, I think this is a pretty amazing piece. I love that you get two different torsos to make two completely different Ghost Riders. And then of course we get the base for the additional torso as well. You guys know I love that. It ties in very nicely with the actual base from the statue. We have that same decorative sub base we have all these chains wrapped around these flames here, and it kind of looks like it's an extension of his body. It's sort of like getting two statues in one. And then I got some requests to put this guy next to the OG XM Ghost Rider. So here it is, getting quite a bit of an arm workout here, but I just wanted to show you guys that I care and I take your requests to heart, even if it kills my back in the process. Okay guys, so that was a look at the new Ghost Rider from XM Studios. I'm really hoping they come out with a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. That was a Ghost Rider from the 90s that I grew up with. 
a whole line of Ghost Riders would be pretty amazing. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you are thinking about picking this guy up. Definitely a great piece if you have a place to put it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.